Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. So the question asked today was hello cap is the DCS world modeled as flat or round and so we need to go and uh, check this out but as ever before we go and fly F-15s and shoot guns and stuff like that we need to do the theory just to make sure that we understand what we're actually measuring. There's a lot of misinformation about this people that just don't understand it and um well, including myself until about five minutes ago to be honest so we need to go and check this out so it's very easy to come into a website like this perfectly good website and read that the earth's radius is approximately that many miles using pythagorean theorem capsulates to an average curvature of 7.98 inches per mile approximately stop and um, uh, a lot of people will just stop there and think right for every mile then there's a drop of the earth of about 7.98 inches or about eight inches so every mile you go away from our little person's horizon there then uh, it goes down another eight inches it doesn't work like that of course that, well, that's a linear linear relationship so that would only work if the earth was not actually curved but the earth kind of tailed down here in a flat line like that and it doesn't of course it's curved it's more complicated than that and this website goes on to tell you how to do the calculation relatively well as well as that we've got another one here horizon calculator we've tested this out thoroughly we looked at the programming and, and double checked it is definitely right and gives us the opportunity here of having a height one there a height two there and where is our line of sight and where is also a radar horizon which is different to our line of sight due to refraction of light and radio waves and whatnot but that, at that point that's above our pay grade we don't need to worry about refraction and bending of light and stuff like that to us do basic logical line of sight like the kind of stuff we we would have in dcs so what we figured out already is that this is not a li simple linear of relationship of what a lot of people seem to think you know it's not simply add uh, um, eight inches or so for every mile or nine inches some people tell me for every, every mile it doesn't work like that it's completely different more complex however that said still relatively easy to understand so we put a, put together a fancy little equation or uh, rubicon and tebro did this for me to help us uh, simplify simplify and kind of visualize that original calculation of how far you would be able to see an object around the curvature of the earth so we've got that here what we can say is that h equals d divided by 1.23 all squared and that's a pretty simple equation so it's saying that the height of the object that we can see equals the distance in miles not nautical miles miles which is a completely different thing to a nautical mile divided by 1.23 squared so if i get my calculator out ever so quickly and we go and do that let's say at a distance of say 46 miles divided by 1.23 equals and squared if i can find him there he is pong at a distance of 46 miles otherwise known as 40 or very close to 40 nautical miles we can see an object or an object disappears at the height of 1398.6 feet assuming that we ourselves are at a level of zero feet above the ground so we are basically our camera if you like is on the ground and what we can do is substitute any distance that we want and it will tell us the uh, height at which the object will disappear so armed with that very simple equation and this website here just to simplify it what we're going to do next is go and jump in dcs and give this a try and see if it is modeled as round or flat so here is our test mission here is where we're going to be viewing from this is our camera boat and here is what we're going to be looking at a frigate along with a higgins boat or uh, the other way around at uh, a distance of 5.4 nautical miles and another one at 10.8 uh, nautical miles so basically these are split by 5.4 nautical miles each all the way out until we get to that guy there they're all equally spread along grid lines which is going to be at uh, around 40 nautical miles at, for that one there and what we should see is that the further we look out here the more the boats are shrouded by the curvature of the earth so before we do that then let's do our predictions and we just got to put it through the basic logic test to, to see what we're going to see now i used to program games uh, i even program my own flight simulator and it's a terrible piece of shit but it gives you a good idea of how things like this are programmed and the logic is that it will not be a rounded earth now the reason is 
in a simulator, it makes it much more harder to program. There will be much more arithmetic to be done in all of the various calculations if you wanted to model this as a curved Earth. If you modeled it as a flat Earth, it's many, many multitudes simpler in just all of the basic calculations that have to be done. And calculations, remember, for us, as currency, it's what its processes that our CPU and GPU processes have to do. And again, the same with my uh, little thing that I did, I made it a flat earth, much, much easier. And it's not lazy programming by the programmers, it is good programming, it's how it should be done. It means we can run it a lot better than if it was actually curved. Now that's what we're predicting we're going to see, and from what I've seen just generally in DCS, that probably is the way it's going to be, but we'll check it out properly in a second. And the way that works generally is if it is a flat Earth, and therefore all of this C, for instance, is at level ground level zero in a flat plane, then you can cut out loads of computation on a processor, and you can make lots of assumptions. Assumptions are good if you have constants instead of variables. It is just so much easier for a game or a simulation to run, much less hardware intensive. So that's a logic test for this one. Let's go and check it out. Okay, there we are. So I'm going to get my camera as low down to zero as I can. That's as low as it's going to let me go, I think. Can I get any lower? No, about there. About level with that guy's shoulder in the Higgins boat. That's fine. Let me uh, just move myself out here a little bit, away from the Higgins. So there are our ships. So here's the closest one at 5.4 nautical miles zoom in you can see the higgins boat and you can see the ship there so we've got to uh, make a little assumption here we've got to think of how high our center of our camera is above the surface of the earth i.e that water line and it's going to be about four feet the top of that guy's shoulder uh, i'd say about four feet so if we're four feet and we know the distance that that uh, ship is there away from us then what we can work out is how much of the curvature of the Earth should get in between the center of our camera and the base of where that ship there meets the waterline, i.e. how much of that boat and that Higgins boat should be hidden. So let's go and do the calculation. Okay, now my apologies that you can't see this. I'm using the uh, calculator website that's all set up for me. So I'm going to say that we are, height number two is four feet above the surface of the Earth. Uh, height 1, which is the amount that is going to be obscured of the ship, is going to be H1, that's going to be a variable, and the distance between us is going to be 5.4 nautical miles, which gives us the amount of the boat that is going to be covered is 9.44 feet. So, at the distance of 5.4 miles, the amount of this boat that should be covered is about 9.5 feet. And we can't really judge that. Well, in fact, we can already because look at Higgins' boat. Even at 5.4 miles, the Higgins' boat is less than 9 feet. So the Higgins' boat there should, in theory, be invisible due to the curvature of the Earth. And maybe this kind of red water line we shouldn't be able to see either. So with that logic, let's start moving on. And what we can see that this guy is 10 or 11 miles out. This guy is 15 miles out, 16 miles out, 20-something, uh, 30, any more? 40, 50, no, I think 40 was the last one, pretty much exactly 40. So what we can see there is that 40 miles there, and we did that equation earlier on. In fact, I'll go and redo it, because it's going to be slightly different, because I am slightly above the sea. So, excuse me while I'm just going to do the calculation. I'm above the sea by 4 feet. The distance between us is approximately 40 nautical miles. That means 1,265 feet of that ship is covered up by the curvature of the Earth, this one here. So, what we're saying is, if that boat was to actually be there, the horizon should be somewhere up there. Or another way of saying it is, if the horizon is here, that boat, in theory, should be somewhere, whoops, down, somewhere down there, 1,200 feet down there. Um, we definitely shouldn't be able to see the Higgins boat. So the first thing to say is, absolutely uh, that the curvature of the earth is clearly not modeled in dcs if it was we would just see it much easier generally even from high flying high and stuff like that so that's the first thing concluded the modeling physical in terms of polygons and models everything is done on the flat plane just uh, tag on to this i don't know if anyone's interested in this at all but kind of weird thing i'm interested in note how um, when I'm really zooming forward here, a really uh, 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 narrow angle lens, then you can see how that Higgins boat, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually floating above the surface of the water. Uh, and this, this uh, frigate here is actually slightly 
out of the water as well. And the same thing there, the Higgins boat is above the water. And you get that, that's the same in all video games, you get the same in armour. How the further you zoom in, accuracy of models locations goes down. And from when I was doing the programming a long time ago, it was simply, uh, simply rounding errors that that was because all of the locations of these vessels and the way the camera works in seeing them is done to just a certain amount of decimal places. It's not done to infinite decimal places. We usually work to three, four, five, or six, depending on you know what application you get going here. And so when when you zoom in, you often get these kind of weird little rounding errors where uh, this guy here will be slightly above the horizon or below the horizon, stuff like that. That's certainly what I found anyway, and that's probably why you'll see stuff if you zoom in. Uh, floating above the horizon and similar things like that. Okay, so that's that shown pretty easily. There's not really much to dispute there. It's all the simple basic uh, maths and formulae. It's all there written down uh, in the various websites and all of the websites agree with each other, at least the ones that don't believe in flat earth. Next thing to do is pa -pa -pa, jump in a flanker and go up high. But Cap, you say, when I get in my flanker, I can see the curvature of the earth. And yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, if you look at that now, look around, that is clearly a curved earth. And I hate to, hate to burst the bubble, but it's purely a cheeky little effect that uh, AD have written on there. Just to kind of curve, when you're up high, it kind of curves the horizon down. So it's just a nice little effect they've put on to make it look round. And it looks very good and very realistic. In reality, I think at this height, it would even be more rounded, I think. But uh, I stand to be corrected. Okay, so we've determined, yes, it is a flat Earth, and we agree that, yes, actually, we're glad they did it like that because it's just the best way to program a video game, or simulator, whatever you want to call it. And no, it doesn't really have any problems, you know, that the, the fact that it's flat is never really going to cause you a problem. But all of a sudden, you think, hang on, doesn't this mess with the radars? Shouldn't you be able to hide from a radar by going around the curvature of the Earth and whatnot? And yes, you're absolutely right. So the first thing to note is that how the radar is affected by the curvature of the Earth is different to how light, you know, your eyes is affected by the curvature of the Earth. And that's a complicated thing that I can't possibly hope to under, uh, explain to you due to refraction of um, uh, radiation and, uh, I don't know, it's beyond me, put it that way. But they react differently. They, they be, light actually bends around things, refracts around things. It's, it's above the station of what we need to understand today. But what we're going to say is that radar for the sake of today is equal to sight or light when it comes to looking at its effect by the curvature of the earth. And so what we're going to do now is jump out of DCS and look at some a tiny bit of math again and then we're going to come in and test using the radar to see if we can hide ourselves in or around the curvature of the earth. And to put it through our logic test uh, again probably is what we'll find probably yes what it probably done is although they're not modeled the world round they have put again a bit like this uh, kind of fake horizon here uh, a little bit of trickery in there so that their radar systems probably will be modeled with the curvature of the earth so back to our basic calculator again and like we said we tested this we're happy it's perfectly right uh, we're going to have h1 which is going to be the cent longitudinal axis of our aircraft the center more or less of our antenna our radar antenna is going to be uh, first of all on our first test 500 feet above the earth and then this guy here is also going to be an aircraft. The center of his plane, his longitudinal axis, his data line, and his radar cross-section, most importantly, for detection, is going to be 500 feet above the world. And what we should see is that in terms of radar or visual, is going to be 47 miles, 50 miles, basically longer than we can measure. The reason is down here, roughly low down, DCS approximates, it doesn't really model per se, it approximates radar noise down here. And so that the actual maximum distance, even forgetting curvature of the Earth, of detecting a plane roughly down here is going to be about 20 to 30 miles anyway. So at 500 feet, there should be no effect of the curvature of the Earth visible or detectable by our radar. Then we'll repeat the experiment. We'll get a number, whatever that number is, detection distance, and we'll de repeat the experiment. This time we're going to have one, the detection aircraft, at 50 feet. The, so the centre of our antenna is going to be 50 feet above the surface of the world. And the, the guy who we're searching for is also going to be 50 feet. The centre of his radar cross-section is going to be 50 feet above the surface of the world. And what we can see then is probably how DCS model will probably be visual horizon here for the radar, probably. And it's going to be about 15 miles. Um, there's going to be, you know, it's going to be impossible to fly perfectly at 50 feet in any of our aircraft. So give or take, you know, a couple of miles, I imagine. And if we prove that that make, does make a difference in the detection range, we've proved that DCS does indeed model 
although not physically in terms of the models and the meshes and the polygons, but in the terms of its sensors, it models the curvature of the Earth, which is uh, and its line of sight as well, which is what we really care about. So let's go and get that done. So we're going to do some testing. I've got my boys Ruby and Tebro in. First of all, we're going to do a control test and wait until I can see you. When I see you, I'm going to pause because I need to set the measurement at that point. Okay, I'm at 500 feet. So the curvature of the Earth isn't playing any part at this point. They're at 500 feet too. Working on it, getting up there. Um, I want to say the curvature of Earth isn't playing any any part in this, by which I mean within the limit that I'm going to be able to pick them up. Down here, due to noise and stuff like that, uh, the most I could pick them up is about 30 miles anyway. So, um, there's beautiful frigates over to the left. Stop! I've got one of you, doesn't matter which one it is. Um, I'm going to... So I have the ability to track you. It's going to be Ruby. He's a little bit faster. He is 28 miles. Exactly what I got before. Now, uh, what that means is the limit of my radar's power. It's not a line of sight at this point. It's power or you know filtering ability is 28 miles. And well, that could be 500 feet, 700 feet, 900 feet. You know, whatever. It was going to be the same 28 miles. For F15, use your scene gauge at the bottom. It's your most accurate method of um, uh, below the RWR. It's your most accurate method of. Um, doing this because the accuracy is key right I'm at 140 170 and what we're working to here is the center point of our plane that's the center of my antenna the longitude axis of my plane and that is going to be more or less the center of their radar cross section and because of that, I'm going to go slightly below 50 feet. I'm going to be about 45 feet. The thickness of this aircraft is about 8 to 9 feet, excluding the tail fins. There we go. I'm at 45 feet. And at some point, I'm going to pick one of you boys up. There we go. 45 feet. So my radar antenna is at 50 feet. Stop. Got one of you. And yeah, hey... Your RWR signal. Hey, presto. Hey, presto. 12 miles. Beautiful. So, that not quite, but nearly tallies up with our line of sight. And, you know, we've got plus or minus. There is probably some errors in here anyway that we've done. I'm checking Vigan. You're at 36 feet, Tebro. So, that makes sense um, that I spotted you at 12 miles instead of 15 miles. So, absolutely beautiful. Let's see if I can actually see you. So, the funny thing about that is, what we've discovered, and uh, it's a lovely conclusion, is that DCS World is not modelled curved. It is modelled flat. Uh, for the reasons of simplification of programming. But there is trickery in here to ensure that the sensors of our aircraft is modelled with um, line of sight, is modelled with curvature of the Earth. So only at this point, although we can clearly see him, me, I've not just popped over the horizon because there is no curvature of, at the Earth here, but our sensors do model curvature of the Earth there. Um, absolutely perfectly, pretty much, from the footage uh, that this guy is at and the footage that I am at there or the altitude anything you two boys want to add to that no nope. beautiful work beautiful work i'm glad we did that all right thanks boys and um, i hope you enjoyed watching the video and we'll see you later